point, I think we have a, cup, a couple of minutes to take um, any questions that the audience might have. And if you would like to come up to the microphones and ask uh, a question or two, we have some time. Thank you, Lee. Hi, yes. Um, a question uh, mainly for David and Phil. Uh, I was visiting a, a baby who was born yesterday uh, here at, at the nursery, uh, and his parents, one of them, one of my best friends, were very excited about routine bio, uh, microbiome transplant for um, newborn infants. And I'm wondering um, about your opinion on that and the, the role, the current and future role of prophylactic microbiome transplants. I'll, I'll make a, <coughs> excuse me, a quick comment. Um, I, I recognize uh, a great deal of interest in trying to um, manage um, this, this interesting contributing factor to health and disease. And there's certainly a couple of very specific cases and settings in which management has proven to be um, effective in, in guiding the system back to a state of health. Those circumstances are, are quite limited in number, though, and I think it reflects the fact that we still don't understand, in fact, that topological landscape I showed and what it takes to shift a community from one stable state to another. Certain circumstances lend themselves quite, um, quite easily to manipulation and shift. Most do not, and, and many of Phil's colleagues and others around the world are now um, working in earnest to try to understand how do we modify that landscape and, and promote um, the kinds of shifts that we, we think are useful and, and yet don't yet know how. So I'd caution. Yes, go ahead. I thank you again for a great series of talks. Um, I had a follow-up question about Zika. So um, is it, what is the state of thinking about how long Zika can um, remain in a host and potentially affect baby's brain? So for example, women who are in Brazil now and are infected but not pregnant, um, do they have to worry if they plan on getting pregnant two months in the future, a year in the future? Yes, yeah, so the understanding is is that the reason why the fetus gets infected is because the mother gets bitten by the mosquito and then gets viremic. So she has virus in her blood that then traffics to the placenta, uses axle to cross the centrosal trophoblast into the fetus, and then gets to the neuroprogenital cells all during the, that period of viremia, which again is quite short, only about a, maybe a week at the, at the most, and so anybody who's of childbearing age who maybe gets Zika now shouldn't have any lasting effects from the virus, unless they're the unfortunate few that end up with Guillain-Barre or something like that. Otherwise, it should not r risk any future pregnancies for that mother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. I'd like to, again, thank the, um, our uh, wonderful panel of speakers and um, encourage you to take a short break now, and I think we'll be back at 10... 15, is that right? 10, 10, 15. 10, 15. All right, thank you very much.